And here we are with part two of our flu season. Smiling at you is Nurse Linda. This is Dr. Charles behind the camera. And first segment, what you want to hear is myths about flu and things that you really should know. Now, how, we're talking about what now? We're going to talk about how to prevent the flu. Prevent the flu. Or how to treat it once you get it. And that doesn't work. <laughs> I had the flu. My wife took care of me. Great. Still felt lousy. The flu is going to last seven to ten days on average. You're going to feel bad, no matter how you look at it. But you can make yourself feel as good as possible, and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit. My dad's cure was bourbon <laughs> to make him feel better. But I don't know how, how that did. That would help with the aches and pains, maybe, but uh, would not be especially good for the fever that no. comes along with it. We'll talk about prevention first. And the first, of course, is the best way to prevent any disease transmission. And every healthcare provider learns this in the very first class they take is washing your hands. You cannot wash your hands often enough in some cases. What about that uh, cream or what do they call this uh, stuff that kills germs? Yeah, we're going to come up with that next because I want to stress the importance of good old fashioned soap and water. A, B, C, D. <laughs> you cannot beat that running water, liquid soap really should get away from bar soap. If you want to choose, a long time ago. If you want to choose mm -hmm. to use bar soap in your home, that's fine because it's your family using it. Not a problem with that. But people coming into your home, you have a guest bathroom, provide liquid soap. You don't want them bringing germs into your home and leaving and it on the soap. Paper towels. Paper towels or what we tell our caregivers when they go into someone's home if that person maybe lives green, they don't have paper towels, a clean hand towel upon their arrival. Don't ever use that towel that that person has hanging at their sink no, because no. you don't know how long it's been there. You don't My know skin. what they've wiped on it. Exactly. Skin so crawls, things about that. Running water, liquid mm -hmm. soap, and either a clean hand towel or paper towels, ideally paper towels. When you go dry your hands, especially in a public washroom, you dry your hands, use the paper towel to turn the water off. You used it to turn the water on You've washed your hands, now you're putting your hand on that dirty knob. Use the paper towel. Absolutely imperative. I use the paper towel to open the door to get out. And you can do that too because not everybody washes their hands. So that's number one. Uh, be aware of what you're touching. When you open a doorknob, when you open a drawer on a public desk, uh, pushing a door open, I usually, if I can, I use my shoulder. Um, those step-on door openers are the best things in sliced bread. You don't have to ever touch the door. Never saw one of those. Oh, yeah, the old-fashioned kind. You used to step on the mat in front of the door, and the door would open. When we were kids, that, that came out when I was about probably 10 years old, and that was like the best thing in the world. Now, of course, everybody's got the, the lights up above the doors, but uh, don't touch the doors if you can mm. help it. Shopping carts, we mentioned that a little bit in the last segment. They have the wipes available for you. If not, carry wipes in your pocket. They make them in cute little pocket packages so you can take it out and clean it beforehand. Be aware of what you're touching in the store shelves. Then be aware of what you're doing with your hands. People touch their, their hands to their faces something like 70 times a day or something ridiculous like that. Well, I've touched my eyes and my nose and my mouth about six times since we started this. Yes, yes. <clears throat> it, it's a habit. Be aware of it. Stop and think about every time your hand starts to come near your face, and you'll find that you can really decrease those things on your hands that you don't anticipate. Passing papers back and forth. Caregivers bring them into our office. I pass them to Tanya. We can be passing things all over the place. You need to be aware of that and, and know that you can catch something just from that casual contact. Another big one, don't stay inside. Who? Don't stay inside. Everybody during cold and flu season want to stay home. Get out. You need fresh air. On days when it, you can tolerate it, if you don't have other underlying illnesses, open your windows in your house. We're in get South Carolina. It's always, it's always <laughs> nice out. Um, but you want to get outside. You don't want to stay inside. That's where germs breed. That's when people said, well, I get sick and it lasts all winter because you're staying in the house. Mm -hmm. Get out. What you do want to avoid when you get out is avoid crowded places. Avoid crowded movie theaters, crowded restaurants. So maybe you don't go to your favorite restaurant Friday night, but you go to a little hole in the wall where you don't have 14 people packed in the waiting area to be seated. Okay, 
be aware of those kinds of contacts because then you run into the next one where people cough and sneeze and you're within a few feet of them. Sneezes can travel something like 10 feet. An uncovered sneeze and cough. <coughs> so you should always cover it. You can cover it with a tissue. The best thing to do, because most people don't walk around with tissues in their hands, use your elbow. Sneeze or cough into your elbow. You can tell them sneezing into their elbow because of the phlegm. <laughs> But it does make a difference. And then you're not taking those germs and passing them on to someone else when you shake hands, when you open doorknobs, things of that nature. But you need to stifle it and you need to keep it all to yourself. We always are taught to share when we're younger. This is something we don't need to be shared. Keep it to yourself. Yeah, I remember our son brought home the disease of the week from school. Of course, of course. And then you have the option of tissues versus handkerchiefs. Be aware of that, that you're pulling that handkerchief out. How long was it in your pocket? Especially men, uh, women, older women have hankies in their purses. Uh, tissues are better. You use it and get rid of it. Um, it's just more, sanit more sanitary. We also see pictures of crowded areas like Japan when there's an outbreak of some sort. People oh. walk around with masks. And I just found out there are different degrees of masks. Yes. Some that clear out 90% of stuff. Then. Yes. You, you have HEPA masks, you have different, like you said, different grades, um, depending on what's going around. But be aware, people will put those masks on when they're still in that public area, take it off and just let it hang there. Now, if there's anything floating through the air, it's gone onto the inside of your mask. Good point. Those masks should not be, once they're on, removed. If they're being removed, they should go into your purse or your pocket immediately. Baggy. Carry a bag. Right. To protect the inside of the mask. And that's what you're doing is you well, don't you want anything like to get that. the inside. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you, and I see it constantly. You're losing the effectiveness of it. I was going to do that once and paint a mouth with teeth on uh -huh. it, but I figured it would scare people if I didn't do it. <laughs> the other thing to do to prevent illness is stay hydrated. Make sure you're drinking plenty of fluid. Stay well rested. Get plenty of sleep, especially in the winter time. Eat well and eat regularly. And if you're not a big breakfast person, have fruit juice and a piece of fruit. Have a, a piece of toast. Have something to keep your calories up, you keep your metabolism up, and you keep your white cells fighting anything that may be coming in. I eat well and regularly at Ryan. That's why I'm so healthy. <laughs> But those are some of the very simple things. And you should also be exercising. Exercising to where you can breathe deeply. And if there's anything that's trying to settle in your nasal passages or your lungs, you're flushing it out. In conclusion of this segment. In conclusion, you can stay safe, you can stay well, and you can stay protected with just a few simple steps. Hand washing, get your flu shot, or talk to your doctor about it, and take care of yourself. Be healthy. What's coming up next segment? Well, we didn't get into this segment. We didn't get into what to do when you do get the flu. We're going to cover that. And then we're going to have a little fun with celebrations during the month of January. Hmm. Simple, I, silly things. Oh, good. Silly things. Good. So we have some good news at the end of the next segment. Nurse Linda <laughs> will be right back with Senior Moment with Nurse Linda. <laughs> 